Welcome to World of Monsters. This is Monster Master Arthur. And, well, I wanted to make this video and have my face captured as well, as I always think that a face to go along with the voice is a nice thing, but I also figured it would be a little bit distracting. So, nonetheless, the question that I posted, and I posted this in our communities over on Facebook and here on YouTube, and on YouTube, the community tab is right here, if you didn't notice. Uh, also, you can send private messages through the About link here. Now, the community tab isn't too great here, as you can just reply. Uh, it's not like the discussion tab used to be. But anyway, here we go. So let's get started with this question. And I did post it because obviously I had a answer in mind that I wanted to discuss, but I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts first. So once again, the question was, what do you think is the scariest animal on this earth? real monster, basically. Humans aside, as we know that that is clearly the scariest animal or the scariest monster. So here we go. And I've been, I couldn't wait anymore until I could read these comments because I didn't want to read them by myself until I had it filmed and recorded. So here we go. The answers. Uh, let's take a look at those and then I'll discuss mine at the end. So let's see what you guys said. Uh, first comment here we have parasitic worms that live in people's intestines. Hmm. And that's the, the first answer so far. By the way, I was pleased and surprised with the amount of responses. We got 47 comments. It's the most active post I've ever had here. So I like that first answer. I'm going to up like that. Uh, wow. I'm surprised that that's actually the first one on here. I wasn't expecting that. Megalodon. Nice, and if you don't know what a megalodon is, it's the giant, basically prehistoric, huge sharks, fish, and uh, bigger than a school bus, basically. So, yeah, quite a frightening creature. Uh, parasitic worms, I'll talk more about that in a little while, so that's why I'm not discussing that too much here. An orangutan, <laughs> that one, that's an enjoyable one, but uh, as any, it's a wild animal, and sure, just as apes... Uh, especially when they mature, they can get quite aggressive, and I would believe that about an orangutan as well. Uh, next one we got, Creative Equinox says, those mind-controlling fungal fungal spores that control ants, parasitic worms that burrow into an insect and slows everything aside, inside while controlling the host. These concepts alone are terrifying. Just imagine if they adapted to humans. Absolutely absolutely agreed on that highly liked that uh, correlates with that first post as you see that one had six uh, likes I guess this is sorted by likes so uh, uh, that's cool I guess it uh, saves some time um, what is undiscovered in our ocean besides that perhaps grizzly bears hmm uh, agreed and our Oceans are very undiscovered, as is our land, but our oceans far, far so. And grizzly bears, just imagine seeing one in the wild. Um, but they still follow laws of nature, unlike humans do. So there are ways of dealing with the uh, animals in their habitats. All right, the top three. Let's see what this uh, person says. Mosquito, number one. They kill more humans than any other animal on Earth. Nice. Good point. Hornets, most aggressive flying insects, especially the Asian hornets. Uh, if you're talking to Asian, like uh, giant hornets, the big ones, those are frightening. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, let's see. I think they're, they're about a couple inches in length or possibly a little shorter. They're some of the biggest hornets. But just imagine that sitting on your shoulder and people freak out a lot about little bees here. Uh, and then number three is a bee, indeed. Less scary version of the hornet. Hmm. Of course, uh, hornets and wasps are more scary because they have straight stingers, so they sting you and they still survive. A bee, basically, they sacrifice their life as they the stinger leaves their body. After they sting you and that little portion of organ with it, so they die, die afterwards. Uh, most common uh, bees. This not, may not always be the case. Goblin sharks are terrifying. I agree. Goblin sharks are... You gotta just Google goblin sharks. And I'm not gonna do it now to not to waste your guys' time. But Google goblin sharks. They have such a fascinating and awesome 
uh, design to them. So monstrous. Let me like that past one and this one. I'd say they're definitely frightening in appearance, but not so in reality. I don't even think that they're that much of a danger to humans. And especially on top of that, how rare they are. So, but in appearance, crazy, crazy looking fish. All right, next one. We got my man Gargamel Gold says spiders must die in quotes. My friend, my uh, one of my best friends is a, a, has a big uh, fear of spiders, arachnophobia. Spiders are an important part of the ecosystem. They feed off many insects. They feed off many insects whose population will grow out of control without them. This they may be, they may be creepy and even scary. Not to mention dangerous at times. But wiping them out would still be a horrible idea. And I love this comment because uh, this person may exo ghost. Oh, that's who said that. Okay, sorry, I got distracted by that. Um, this person understands, and that's what I love about our community. Already I'm impressed with the answers, and that just shows why I appreciate you guys so much, but uh, this person finds spiders the worst and says must die, but still gets the point of their purpose in this world, and that's a higher level of understanding. If people would have that more often, man, the world would be a different place. So I love that answer, and I love the backup to it. That little bit of knowledge, it shows that Gargamel gets it, and a lot of people don't, believe me. Well, I bet you know. You just go out and talk to people. All right, next one. Wolf Fox the Great. Uh, we got the bloody Dunkle, Dunkleosaur, Dunklea, Dunkleosteos. Dunkleosteos. Let me see what that is. Sounds like a, a goofy dinosaur, but it's not. It uh, It is prehistoric, though. It's a prehistoric fish. Oh, yes, of course, a type of bony fish. Um, very cool. I wonder how big this one actually gets. Well, there's the answer, possibly. 30 feet. Yeah, that's a very cool fish, and it would gobble you up for sure. It may be, yes, it is smaller than the Megalodon, but it's, uh, it's a different type of fish, and it is a bony type of fish, what it looks like uh, compared to today's bony fish. What a cool answer. I like that one. And anything in the water attacking you, I find quite frightening as, as that is unexplored territory and unnatural territory for us uh, land animals. Next one, we got Melina Ook. I would go with the with Donald Trump. He is no human anymore, so I can pick him. <laughs> what can I say about that without getting political? Well, as most people at that level are egotistical, megalomaniac, uh, what's the other word? I forgot right now, but uh, quite a few issues in the mind. So, yes, a monster, but as I said, humans aside, and, well, all jokes aside, I still consider uh, Donald Trump uh, an example of a human, good or bad, whatever it may be. Um, let's continue. Thank you for that uh, bit of humor, by the way. Or seriousness, either way. Thank you. <laughs> Comer Games. We got uh, werewolves because they're scary as F. All right. Um, I like it just because the, the, the response, although it doesn't go as uh, we're looking for animals, right? We're looking for proven real creatures. Uh, so continuing. Uh, let's see. I'll just not like it because it doesn't go by the rules, but, you know. I love, I love when people get active with us, so nonetheless, thank you for commenting. Then we got Roberto Torres, which says, number one, lion, okay? Number two, grizzly bear, okay? Both big predators, land predators, and of course, one of the most frightening predators in the water, which are sharks. But are, the, are they the biggest frightening one in the water? Hmm. Nonetheless, sharks have a scary appearance, I find, to them. And finding a wild, a lion in the wild would freak you out quite a bit um, compared to seeing them behind glass or uh, within a cage. Next, we got Leech. Cool. Goes along the parasitic lines. And there are some freaky looking uh, uh, Leech type creatures out there for sure. Um, Gargamel Gold again. World of Monsters. I love how you always... And I love when people comment like that and they say, World of Monsters, like directly to me. And it says, world of monsters, comma, which animal on earth is the scariest? 
I would have to think about that for a long time. I really don't know which of the creature on Earth scares me the most. There are a lot of dangerous predatory that I wouldn't, predators that I wouldn't want to run into along in the woods, especially at night. Some of the big cats come to mind like lions. Wouldn't want to mess with the king of the jungle. And which I would call more of a king of the savannah, as that's kind of publicly wrong, but I'm being a bit nerdy here, but that's what we do on this channel, right? <laughs> but anyway, we got rabid wolves are also pretty terrifying. Agreed. I can see why people came up with the concept of the werewolf. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need some we need to see some more were lions out there. That'd be pretty nuts. They should make God, there's so many awesome ideas for cool movies out there that people don't take advantage. Make a tribal movie in Africa with, you know, a little village and then being attacked every night by were lions. What an awesome and cool idea that would be and bring a bunch of fans. And also, anyway, I'm straying to the side. Thank you, Gargamel. And I'm wondering also how long you guys can make the posts here. Can you post as long as you want or are they limited? Because that would not be cool if they are limited. Okay, let's go to Indominus Rex who says Silverback Gorilla. Yes, absolutely would be frightening. Uh, power of 10 men, uh, it depends how we're comparing it, but that's how it's often said. And again, anything wild. And if we're going with the word rabid, well, okay, so along those lines, but basically wild animals. There's a reason why they can survive out there, and it'd be incredibly hard for most people, if even possible. The angler fish. The angler fish is cool. Let me show you guys. That's Leopoldo Ramirez. Let me show you right here. I hope you guys are okay with the length of this video as I do like going through your comments and I do really appreciate how active you are. There's the angler, angler fish. It's not very, it's not a threat to humans unless it was, okay, I thought that was a picture. I thought that was an artwork, which it is, but it's from a movie. Anyway, but uh, these fish are not that big and they live very, very deep in the waters. Very frightening appearance. A lot of those fish have frightening appearances as well as the viper fish. Maybe we'll see that on that on the fish. So good answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next we got we got tro Trogloraptor spider. Tro I gotta sorry guys, I gotta take a look at this. I'm sure you're curious what this is. And a Trogloraptor spider. Um I hope so. No bad images come up. Okay. No naughty images, you know. Google. I mean, YouTube. Uh, okay, so it looks like a usual kind of spider. I can see that. I can see that. Um, let's see. It's quite, quite a name. Wolffish. Uh, I remember wolffish. Uh, let me show you guys what a wolffish is. All right. Big toothed. Yep. Pretty cool, and it's quite a size. Sure, if you got that going between your legs and you're in the... The water, uh, I could see that even though a guppy would freak someone out actually in the water if it just, uh, if it goes against the leg. It's again, that fear of the unknown there. We got frilled shark. Frilled shark, uh, it's not the basking shark I'm thinking of. Basking shark has a freaky appearance, though they're pretty harmless to us, but they look awesome. Ah, yes, yes. Look at those teeth. Ooh, very nice. Uh, Goliath Tigerfish, ooh, I like this person's uh, choices here. Ooh, jeez, look at that, look at that. Mm -mm -mm. That can take a nice little chunk out of you if it really wanted to, and most of the creatures don't. Please remember that, as that's part of the whole education, understanding wildlife. <clears throat> okay, this... Really? Cyclops shark. I'm gonna do some research on this. This is of course fake, um, but this is not. And this is very fascinating. I don't I find it more cute than scary, actually, and I don't find many things cute. Most things I find cute are in nature. Uh wow. I am keeping that tab open. I'm gonna have to check that out for later. That is really cool. It reminds me of the uh Cyclops Kitten, that was born years ago. <clears throat> Thank you, Justice League. Great answer. I wish I could double thumbs that up. 
Okay, we got Kaiju Squid that says Rosie O'Donnell. Okay, another bit of humor because she is a whale. She's nowhere near a human being. It's so funny that the only humans mentioned here actually correlate with each other, which is Trump and then Rosie. So possibly we have a Rosie. Well, no, possibly we got one Trump fan and one non-Trump fan. But anyway, it's funny that they both got mentioned as Trump did call her uh, fat, saying it nicely, I guess. All right, thank you for the bit of laughter. Then we got Ishwar Kisson, who says Mesosaurus. Hmm. Moving along, uh, and ooh, very cool. Uh, is that the huge one in, of course, overly large in the movie, the latest Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic World? Uh, it looks very similar. Um, I think it may be, because I, uh, from looking at the name, and oh, hell it. Yeah, that would be frightening as anything. That size, prehistoric crocodiles, crazy stuff. Thank you for replying. Um, we got the great white shark, absolutely. Or the lioness, or the silverback, or the lioness, or a lioness, sure. Uh, I would say lionesses would be even probably maybe more aggressive than male lions. Uh, but there's a lot of factors to go with that. So, um, the or silverback gorilla. Absolutely big predatory animals, period. Well, gorilla is not predatory, predatory, but it is very uh, just naturally competitive. It's a wild animal, so on and so forth. We got uh, that comment twice and thrice. <laughs> okay, then we got ticks and leeches. Absolutely parasites, right? Uh, then we got King Ferdinand. Uh, we got mosquitoes and the undiscovered ocean animals also in the goblin shark again mentioning the goblin shark agreed 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 when to go again not uh part of our uh animal books here so anyway thanks for mentioning that we got the megalodon again a huge prehistoric shark a big enough mouth to take me in standing up basically all right, we're here we got a longer answer. We got Ninja Hubra Palido. Uh, well, it is a fact that spiders are the most common fear in humanity. Okay, but besides that, here are some other scary animals. First of all, cats. I know what you're thinking. Cats aren't scary, or if they are, they're not that scary. First of all, I'm referring to most species of cats, the dyes of a cougar or small the size of a cougar or smaller okay that's what it says second the reason why they are scary because at night they freaking sound like a crazy woman in the woods <sighs> so what else the spider scorpion hybrid thing okay let me comment about the cats first that is funny because um cats do make really awkward noises especially during breeding season and you can they can freak you out a little bit also cat aggression and just their ability to fight uh, is pretty impressive. Imagine when you tickle a, a cat's belly sometimes. Sometimes they like it, not really, but a lot of times they don't, and they will get you quick. Now imagine a lion-sized cat and you doing that to that. If, if a little cat can mess your hand up or freak you out, imagine what a lion or tiger could do, right? So what else? The spider-scorpion hybrid thing. Spider-scorpion hybrid. Let me take a look at that, if that's a correct link. Ah, yes, that's actually a vinegaroon. And I did have one in my house running around. And at that time, I didn't even know what that is. And it freaked me out. <laughs> it really did. And actually, I realized them. They, they sell them here in the States and in various places as pets. But that came in my house, and they go fast. And yeah, it's called a vinegaroon. Vinegaroon. Freaky appearance. Lampreys, absolutely. If you guys haven't seen what a lamprey looks like, take a look at that. Um, that's not a, there we go. They're not that frightening as, you know, they come off. Well, they are quite frightening, but they're not that, you know, scary. Like in one of the Stephen King's movie, it actually has a creature, a uh, dream catcher, I believe. So they hook on the fish and, and feed on them a little bit. But that's a pretty scary mouth part right there. Oh, and that lemur that looks like a witch, the AA. Uh, I could see that as creepy. I could see that as creepy. The I.I. I believe, uh, Australian. 
They have a lot of uh, nocturnal species like this. Pretty cool, huh? Look at that picture. Cute or creepy? It looks like a little goofy werewolf creature there. I like it. I like all animals, though. Uh, definitely liking and loving. Oh, and of course, the huge flying cockroaches. Yeah, what can you say about cockroaches, right? Oh, uh, back to Gargamel here. Awesome seeing you that active, Gargamel. Uh, sorry, but the blob is not even a real animal. It may be terrifying, thankfully, not real world. Monster Master specifically. All right, he got the point. Um, oh boy, that's a long answer. I'm going to read that. Maybe, uh, maybe sped up or later. Let me see. Silverback Gorilla. We talked about this already. The prowl would be a lot more terrifying. And if you hear any awkward sounds, it's my chair. If they weren't mostly herbivorous. Okay, true. True. If they were strictly predatory, that would be quite frightening. Uh, a gorilla's day is sick, synchronized uh, between periods. We got some interesting facts here. Uh, Eastern, cool. Looks like you copy and pasted some stuff. Rarely drink water, but because they consume succulent vegetation. Very cool. I love that. I love people that give uh, bits of info and then a, a great bit of sourcing to it, too. So, yeah, I'll probably uh, read on that later. Thank you, Gargamel. And thank you, Gargamel, again here. The Midnight Thunder Boy. Uh, parasitic worms that live in people's intestines. They are pretty scary. He agrees. And it's nice to, uh, to see you communicating with other people here, which is hard to do since you can't reply many times here. Uh, actually, you guys can't reply to anymore, and that's kind of silly in this community style. I hope YouTube changes that. But thank you, Gargamel, for making an effort to communicate with other people here as well. We got bed bugs. Freaking bed bugs. Yeah, bed bugs are, are a nasty little thing. Uh, they're very little, so not like you would think of a bed bug. I mean, it's like a tick, but uh, there you go. That's what they do. They leave red marks on the body. Not fun. Okay, Titanoboa, that's a prehistoric large snake, uh, Boa. Then we got grizzlies. Wow, a lot of replies. I love this. Grizzly bears, again. I'm going to have to say a lion. Okay, lion. Uh, continuing, wolverine. Uh, and we can compare different animals, guys. I can make a whole video on that. Uh, that's pretty fun, uh, I think, as well. Just like uh, versus videos, you know. But we can compare what's what would be more freaky and dangerous to you in the wild. Great white sharks. Those are things. Those things are scary. Yep. Scary as hell. Yeah, I agree. Um, again, and now we got wolverines. Awesome. Wolverines, that would be pretty freaky in the wild, of course, if it's just you and it. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried for your life, but uh, if you were to mess with one, watch out. Awesome animals, by the way. Very cool. I'd like to make talk more about wolverines sometime. I'm an arachnophobe, an arachnophobe or arachnophobic, but I also like some arachnids. Okay, good. My favorite Marvel hero is Spider-Man, and I hate the Goliath bird eating spider goliath bird eating spider i believe still is considered the largest spider in the world juan hill i think or juan hill pirate to drink the blood of thine enemies and devour their flesh oh yes i almost forgot to tear their bones and stop their lives humanness nice all right guys trying to move this along sorry uh the giant uh ryan thomas the giant squid, the terrifying kraken. The giant squid, that would be freaky, but they live very deep to be eye to eye with something like that. Um, and like that person said, anything that feeds on your flesh or blood. Uh, we got the bull shark, bull sharks, and they are, let me bull, see, bull shark, not tiger sharks, uh, more commonly um, we have issues with in the world. But bull sharks, yes. Uh, you can get the teeth, very common. Okay, I'm talking too much here. Brain parasites. There we go. Subterranean lizard people. <laughs> awesome. Totally believe in them. It's a cryptid. Absolutely it is. And a very commonly known one. I'm scared of dogs. I feel left over from a... I don't know. They got a, I have a fear left over from childhood incident, but I'm getting better with it. Body parasites. See, that's the problem. Uh, if you have any incident as a child that will screw up your vision on something, and if you have one like that on an animal, I beg you 
to go back and get used to and educate yourself on that animal. I'm not talking particularly with this person, but if you had a spider bite or a bee sting or, or a bad snake experience, educate yourself, handle some, get to know them again so you don't have that ridiculous fear the rest of their, your life as uh, a lot of the in that those type of animal uh, are not that bad body parasites agreed internal ones especially really freak me out thank you jamie reynolds by the way i said it before awesome avatar pick the mothman that's aaron rios the mothman again a cryptid now i want someone to tell me it's not real and why they state have a statue of it Hmm, do they have a statue? I'll have to do more research on Mothman, of course, that's on the list. That thing is still around for its time to strike again. Still around waiting for its time to strike again. All right, thank you for the cryptid. Next, we got Maggot Praise Water. Wow, what a name. What a name, and it goes well with this whole topic. I would have to say reptiles. Uh-oh, we got a reptile-fearing person. Living in Florida, a lot of reptile and amphibians there. We have more poisonous, dangerous animals than most anywhere in the United States. True. But snakes, alligators, and crocodiles rank higher in attack than spiders, boar, and bears. Mainly due to unnecessary human interaction. There you go. You said it. Don't fear them, but a lot of respect and adoration for them. Absolutely. Personally, I don't think of any animal as scary. Good to understand. You got a good... Uh, you got a good level of understanding here, and I agree. I have a love for reptiles. I always had, so I've been handling them and working around with them for a long time, especially in my younger years, and I plan to return to that. Uh, and like this person said, it's a matter of respect and understanding the nature of the creature, too. So thank you for sharing that. We got Spiders Must Die, another person with arachnophobia. Okay. Uh, the poisonous snakes. Sure, I can see that. That's, a, am sure, a common answer in the world. And then the goblin shark. Again, they have a mouth. And let me show you guys, if you don't know what a goblin shark, since we did mention it a few times, and that's one of the creatures mentioned that I didn't talk to you about. Here's what it looks like. Yeah. That's awesome. That's an awesome, well, awesome in some sense, right? Very cool looking crazy mon i would definitely call that a monstrous animal that is so cool uh i'd love to own one so uh they have a mouth like the deacon from prometheus absolutely and i and i believe that was inspired uh by the goblin shark greatly so the deacon from the alien movie prometheus and then finally we have the blob the blob and i have a follower and that's always says the answer blob but this is not that person so somebody uh jumped in for you here so anyway that's that's just funny i'm gonna i guess i'll look that as a as a bit of a joke well i'll be fair with the other ones that didn't say something that's actually an animal all right but i like all of you guys i'm just making a statement to tie, i guess so that's it guys that's all here but that's not all, but not much more, so don't worry, and I'll give you guys my answer and the whole purpose why I made this whole video. So let's take a look at here. Um, this is, okay, there we go. Uh, let me check if everything's still recording fine. All right, wow, 30 minutes in. I am, man, I was not preparing, uh, I was not ready for such a long video, but let's look at what you guys said here. There's only a few comments, so don't worry, and then I'll jump in. So. What do you think is the scariest monster, real monster on Earth, human not included? Okay, and on this poll, uh, we made a poll here, and first of all, people said this, you, Unis Aphroditeus, and let's take a look at what that is, and it is this creature right here. Nice, right? I actually didn't know about the name, and obviously it's uh, too small to be much of a hassle for humans, but it's this creature that lives down in the water i would love to have this as a pet as far as being freaky and scary very much so and thank you for bringing it up guys love it uh, so a lot of people agreed with that one number six and i forgot the name of uh, it's called the bobbit worm uh, i made a note to remember that as uh, if you want to link it to Lorena Bobbit, if you remember who that was that makes this creature and its shape even more frightening 
especially to our male friends out there. All right, continuing with spiders, we got four votes uh, plus four. So it's actually four, five, six, seven. Seven votes, so of course spiders. Um, a really pissed off kitten. Okay, we got some humor here. And I put in puppy here. I was the first one to make kind of a joke because I, I put this as an option, option so people know that they can add to the poll and then they started voting and adding. Uh, so I wasn't serious, but you know. Uh, people took it as a joke and enjoyed it. So, uh, the next serious one, we have this one. Focus Phalangoidus. Ooh, take a look at this one, guys. This is also call, called the, uh, Skull Spider. Not, uh, clearly, but that's kind of a, a nickname for it. Because apparently it's, uh, um, uh, what's it called? A, a thorax, uh, cella thorax i don't want to look it up now but that part of its body the thorax here has the kind of a look of a skull and comparing to other creatures out there that actually do have a skull looking part um you know it doesn't look like it much to me i mean you got this little bit of a shape here like the jaw structure here maybe here maybe the eyes here but it's not that clear honestly and as far as being a spider i mean i could see it if you have arachnophobia but anyway it's cool to learn about such a spider out there so the skull spider very cool name uh there you have it so uh, a lot of people found that frightening as well so and in the comments what do we have here elaine cromer says i would have to say the titanoboa boa okay so that prehistoric huge snake uh kind of like a anaconda uh just much larger then we got Greg Nunman says Utah Raptors, which would be very freaky if they were still alive. And that can apply since it's, it's a real creature, just uh, extinct. But they're actually bigger than the Velociraptors that you see in like Jurassic Park. Uh, so yeah, that would be quite a scary thing to have running around. And of course, large prehistoric like... Uh, uh, Pterodactyl, pterodactyl. Uh, we have this uh, large bird which would gobble you up if you were running around now you can worry about your baby being picked up by a large eagle but imagine if you would be walking around this size a bird would definitely pick you up as a meal uh, you would be about around the right size for it and after reading the after reading the book primitive war by ethan pettis nice great answer uh tack on okay add to that this dinosaur, especially if they hunted in packs and swarmed the prey at the same manner as a piranha. Oh, I think I know which dinosaur this is. Am I correct? Uh, no, I'm not. This is more like a, right, like a land crocodile. It has the body and look of a crack crocodile. Look at that. That is freaky. But it'd be faster in land. And it's a little taller. So that would be quite scary. I always found the crocodiles... Uh, features to be quite intimidating um but when i he said this i was thinking the little biped raptor like dinosaurs that are really small like a foot or two but like that attacking you in the swarm would be pretty scary because it wouldn't be a fast death you know just like piranhas but uh, it would be a death so pretty scary okay then we got any animals in the wood that took PCP, the drug, if there was a polar bear on PCP, that would be pretty wild stuff. And polar bears, I would say, are pretty scary. To me, more scary than grizzlies because of their nature and the environment they live in and how they have to depend even more so on survival when they run into another living flesh creature. I don't know how why I described it as a living flesh. So anyway, thank you, Joel Escribla. Or es Escribia. Okay. All right. Next, we got Shohan Kaggle. I am thinking chimpanzee. They can open doors and they are incredibly vicious beyond the point of self protection. Uh, they are strong, powerful. They can be vicious, not always, of course. And they're intelligent, which makes them more scary. Uh, and this is part of the reason why Michael Jackson didn't have bubbles later on anymore, his ape chimp that he had, because it got to an age where it got really competitive and aggressive. Um, and that's just the nature, you know. It's like having a 
I don't know, keeping a, a boy your whole life, but they never get to adulthood, but they sort of reach that. I don't know, that's a bad comparison, but uh, I'm just trying to explain it so there's still a respect to chimps and understanding that they're not that bad, but there's always that field. Uh, a puppy can cause, in time, it will... A puppy cause, cause in time, it will drain your wallet. <laughs> Great answer. True. So will children, right? But they got to be animals here or uh, non-human animals. All right. Tony James, Cordyceps. And that's the last answer. Let's take a look at that. And now I'll give you my answer. And I'll try to stamp, timestamp this part so people don't have to sit through all the comments if they don't want to. This is awesome. What is this exactly? Ah, it's another thing on the in the realm of what I was sort of aiming at in this video. Is this the fungal anti -medicine? Yes, the fungal uh, kind of uh, parasitic mind controlling thing. Cool, because that will segue nicely into what I want to talk about. So thank you all of uh, the community. First of all, I love you guys and I can see and I always praise my community here on World of Monsters, but this just proved why I should. Maybe we're still small that we don't have a lot of, oh, you know, other people on this channel. And that's probably so. I always think that up to 100,000, you can still build a nice, good, quality, respectable, and respectful community. But after that, it starts to get a little out of hand and you start getting funny people in. But... Thank you guys. So let me talk about it. I jumped into this topic, already had this answer in mind when I was doing um, the research for the strain, which I didn't release the next episode yet. It should be the, the next video out it will be uh, episode two, where I will be talking more about this. And what triggered, not trigger, what uh, uh, inspired me was talking about the worm. And you guys probably know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the horsehair worm. And that inspired the story and the strain. Horsehair worms and hair worms, uh, the different species, what they do is they can actually get in, uh, they get eaten as an egg by an insect, and then they sprout out in the stomach. They open up and they swim out of the stomach and they can, they live there, they feed on the insect as it's living. But then when it's ready to breed again, it actually influences the mind of that insect and controls it into walking into water where it will uh, exit the body, leaving the insect uh, dead, I'm, I'm sure, dead after that, and where it finds another worm to breed with so it can make more eggs that will be eaten by the next thing. So, as I said, it controls the insect to find water. So it puts them in a yeah, my state of mind control. And that's not it. So I wanted to start with this because when people ask that question, the scariest animal creature on this planet, people always usually say spider, shark, bear, lion, snake. Snake is possibly even the number one answer. And yeah, snakes are scary and a venomous snake can bite you and it's going to be hell for you if you survive it. And don't take those ideas lightly that snake bites aren't that bad. It's going to be like you're dying for a week or two. Uh, that's how you're going to be feeling. So it is hell, but it's not that scary to me as the idea of something getting in your body and taking control of your mind and changing who you are uh, during life and then after death as well. That's pretty creepy to me, and it's not that far into science fiction, as we see this worm can do, although with simpler, smaller anatomy. But it's very possible that there is a creature like this, a parasite, a worm, a microorganism on our Earth that can even influence our brains. And actually, there are. But not to the great level yet. Not that we know yet or discovered. But, of course, we can have something come from space and another planet, and it's very feasible to have such parasites in existence. And to me, that knowledge makes that, these little ones that can manipulate us, truly the scariest monster animal, real monster out there. So let me discuss some more real quick, which I find really fascinating and you guys should have or may have already uh, heard about. And hopefully you guys learned something, something new in this video. Sorry, I'm trying not to edit this, so if you hear weird sounds from my mouth, it's just because I'm going non-stop. 
So next we had this, there's this uh, wasp caterpillar. Uh, no, there's this wasp that lays eggs in the caterpillar uh, or on top. And then the uh, wasp larva actually controls and impacts parts of the caterpillar's uh, uh, behavior. So as that parasite develops in that caterpillar, like if it sees danger, it will signal that caterpillar to act in a behavior to protect itself. Um, and eventually the it'll eat the caterpillar through and within and leave, and leaving the dead corpse behind. So that's another one. Um, there's a wasp. Uh, let's see if we got anything. Let me give you some eye candy while we're chatting. Uh, let me see here. Uh, there's also the hookworm, speaking of humans, because most of these things don't affect humans, but there are, not in that level, right? But there are things that put diseases into our body. This one lives in the intestine and it sucks the blood out of your body. That's the hookworm. We, have, of course, have tapeworms that can be in, reach crazy lengths that can live in your whole intestines, feeding on the nutrition that you should be getting. So there's wild stuff like that. There's the guinea, guinea worm, guinea worm. Uh, let's see. So there are various other things, and there is talk that uh, there's possibly uh, there are possibly parasites that have altered uh, parts of our minds, made us more depressed, and things like that. And these are very still unexplored things but it could be possible but now we're talking rather than worms more like really tiny parasites like bacteria um and viruses and that makes uh it makes sense it's it's very very possible um and so here we also have talk of the zombie zombie fungus which uh is actually the picture or the the one somebody sent us and zombie fungus can actually, it starts growing within an ant, for example, and it will guide that ant to go into an area where that zombie fungus wants to grow. So it will manipulate the ant's movement and, and life until it basically leaves the entire group of ants, goes somewhere into some nice shaded area where the fungus finds pleasant for developing, and then the fungus just sprouts out of the ant, destroying it. Of course, not as fast as that sounds. It's a slow, somewhat slow process, but wow. So that's a fungus. Funguses are amazing, guys. I'm a huge fan of <laughs> funguses. I always call myself a fun guy. Five zombie parasites. Let me talk about some more. There's another one that, uh, okay, so there's wasps also that lay eggs on top of spiders, but that's not too much manipulating them. More manipulating ones is this one, this pretty wild one that I just learned about, and it's a wasp that basically stings a cockroach, which uh, paralyzes their legs so it can't walk. Then it stings the head of that cockroach, which will enable those legs to only move. It enables a part of the mind which allows it to have motor skills, mobile skills, uh, mobile ability or motor abilities with the body with the sorry th with the legs only and not any other type of thinking that's pretty wild stuff that's what comes out of the stinger of the wasp and affects the brain of the cockroach so then only those legs can be kind of uh used and what the wasp then does is it grabs the antennae of the cockroach and pulls it and leads it where to go next where it can para parasize, parasitize more on it. So it actually leads it with the antenna, and the cockroach has no will to not follow it. It will simply use its legs to walk along. That's pretty wild stuff. Um, then we got this uh, example of mind-controlling slime balls, which are basically a type of flatworm. And let me see if I have a picture of it. There you go. And that's the flatworm. And what these guys do, if I remember correctly, let me refresh my memory with this picture. Uh, it's, it resides inside mammals. And uh, let me see what the point was here. We go the way out. All right. So eventually, basically, these uh, tiny 
uh, flatworms, liver fluke, uh, will enter a, for example, a, a uh, an insect or an ant, and it will go into the ant's brain and manipulate it enough to walk up a tree so that it can be eaten by a bird where that worm can continue its life process. Fascinating. You see that. And I think uh, two more that I want to list out. Yep, uh, two more. And the last one is a good one, so stay tuned. Uh, here we see the, the one I already talked about, the, uh, uh, the horsehair worm leaving the insect after it brought it to the water. Okay, and then we got this fishy one, which is another, I believe, flat type worm. It's the fluke, and here's the, the name of it. Uh, goes into um, fish, and then it activates that fish's brain in a way to make that fish move and jerk a bunch and overact more, of course, than it normally would to be eaten by another fish to continue this creature's life cycle. And what it does is basically it release, releases like dopamine, like a, yeah, not like, a, but a, a dopamine into the anatomy of that fish. So that fish starts to overact, basically kind of like imagining uh, people using meth or something. So it starts wiggling and moving like crazy, and then it gets eaten by another one uh, within which the fluke worm can continue its life cycle. So that's fascinating. And the last one, maybe the most fascinating, arguably so, I guess, um, since they all are, and definitely the horsehair worm, is this one, which is basically a worm again that gets inside snails. Okay, snails eat it up when they eat poop from these birds. And then this worm enters the body of the snail, and it's pretty sad because you know how a snail has uh, thin, long tentacle-type eyes with a little ball at the end? This worm crawls all the way into the eye, puffing it up, swelling that all whole eye up. And what does it do? Creates an illusion that it's a yummy grub. The birds above see that. They come and goggle the whole snail up. The worm enter, uh, the worm then exits and goes through the body of the uh, bird where it feeds reproduces or whatever i'm not sure if it reproduces reproduces there but it's part of the life cycle and then later its uh, babies and stuff are pooped out again where another snail will eat that so continuing wing life cycle isn't that crazy just imagine this if we have as humans on this earth still had well we do but i mean a lot and big predators that would eat us and then we get some parasite that just like gives us away Instead of hiding in our houses or caves, we would just walk out and then start waving our arms in the air for that predator to find us and eat us. That's basically the same concept that we see here, except I think this is even more nuts just looking at that, imagining the, the torture that snail is actually going through the pain, although it's, you know, it's a much more simple system than we have, a nervous system, but still still something to consider so now think about it once again the scariest creature what do you think it could be do you think it's something that can just well i was gonna say rip us open but that's pretty freaky too right especially if it's a slow death and i've seen some slow deaths by hyenas as well and it's a very graphic sight and it's uh it's yeah it's not comfortable not any more than these so sure you know, I'm not going to say that this is the most. That's just silly to make a statement like that. But I wanted to make that uh, make this video to bring your attention to that. Uh, also, the strain of that video I'm making, which, of course, motivated me to do this. I thank you guys for being active in the Facebook group and the other community uh, section on YouTube. I was very surprised how many answers we got. I guess it was an interesting topic and... I don't guess. I know it was an interesting topic, and we have proof right here. So thank you guys very much. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, let me know. If you prefer to see my face in the corner as well to have something to go with the voice, uh, let me know as well. That's not a problem at all. And until next time, I don't know what to say. This was a wild question.
discussed with uh, the monster rights only here at the world of monsters i'm trying to remember if i need to say anything else but it's been so long anyway if you did watch this through let's see a hashtag wormy kitten there we go that was very random okay <laughs> thank you guys for listening and watching uh, until next time take care of yourselves